Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Fighting Game Character Reviews, where I, an amateur fighting game player, give my two cents on fighting game characters. Celebrate Neko Arc finally getting into Melty Blood Type Lumina, you can tell how long ago I wrote this script. I decided to start this thing that I have had rolling around in my head for a bit, going over the cats in Melty Blood Actress again current code. Now, for those not in the mode, n not in the know, rather, each character has three moon styles to choose from Crescent, Half, and Full Moon. There are a lot of universal changes tied to each style, but I'll mainly be going over the moveset changes. Let's start with Neko Arc, starting with the Crescent Moon style and going down from there. Well, the first thing you'll notice about Neko Arc, even from the character select screen, is that she's tiny. This makes her straight up invulnerable to some high hitting moves. However, in exchange, this means that her attack range is super weedy. Look at that weedy attack. That's a thing I really don't like. Hard to even get close enough to do a good combo. On the plus side, Neko's backdash is legitimately one of the best in the game. 236 is a typical laser with slow startup. The B version is angled upwards, so I find it easier to use in combos. Using it in the air instead gets you an air projectile with a fairly reasonable hitbox. 623 hits the opponent lots of times for absolutely no meaningful damage. The EX version does the circuit break, preventing the opponent from using meter for the few seconds, but that doesn't matter because it's noticeably minus on hit. Using this move is asking for a punish. 214 is a mix-up teleport that doesn't quite work. Using it in the air results in a somewhat functional approach option. I don't know, I'm not a fan of this one. 421 summons some of Mecco's fellow cats to do something random. The effects aren't good enough that you should rely on this move. 232A breathes fire, lodging the opponent and juggling them with the spicy flames for a bit. 22B meanwhile spits out another Neko to do something random. The EX version spits out three J214s. In addition to Neko's regular super, as you can see right there, there's an additional one that also works as an approach. The catch is that it reverses controls for both players, as indicated by the spinning Nekos above your head. It also reverses down and up, which I just now realized. It actually reverses gear controls for slightly longer than it does your opponent. Anyway, Dawn of the Cat, which I showed off earlier. Pretty alright, Super. It actually has range, so that's good. So considering how negative I've been, you might be surprised to learn that this is Nekoark's most functional moon style in the sense that it's not completely dysfunctional like the other two. Speaking of the other two, let's move on to those. Half Moon Neko Arc lacks 421, and although I can't prove anything, I think 22B is less reliable. In exchange, she gains a new aerial version number 236. In addition, Neko's game plan, if you can even call it that, works best with Crescent Moon, so anything less than that is not worth using. In Full Moon, Neko hops into the air before her 236, making it easier to read. She also gets a new 214 where she tunnels underground and unleashes a rising head but out. The A version stays still, the B version goes forward for as long as you press the button, and the C version also stays still for a bit longer and unleashes a bigger rising head button. The move is very predictable and any competitive player worth their salt won't need to know worry about it. Not helping matters is that she's still missing 421, which is the funny option, and her back dash is worse. On the plus side, she has somewhat of a better air dash. So, for the verdict, Nekoark gets a fun of D+, a functionality of F, a rushdown of F, a grappling of F, a zoning of F, and a cat rating of S. Nekoark is about as functional as you can get a joke character to be. Her tools are poor at best, and she has... The things she has going for her don't make up for her massive flaws. But I'm not done talking about just one cat. Let's move on to Nekoark Chaos. Knack for short. 
And would you believe me if I said he's worse than regular Nekoark? Nak is just like Nekoark, uh, except with Nervenkussers, or rather Nero's, powers and voice. Well, this gives him some extra range. His moves are also easy to counterpoke, and he has practically no ability to mix. I find it funny to see Nak running around all silly while he has a super deep voice, provided by none other than Joji Nakata, who may also know as Soul Bad Guy in the Guilty Gear franchise. Grounded 236 and 623 are the same as regular Nekos, as is 214. Grounded 214 is even worse because there's no mix. Instead of spawning two fake Naks, he spawns two Neros. 22X is also pretty similar to its initial version. 421 calls out a deer. I accidentally put 214 there. One of Nero's set play tools, but it usually doesn't work in the context of Nax Kit. For the EX version, Nax calls a deer taxi and you can throw it does so much. A is a big, big jump, B is a... A is a small jump, rather, B is a big jump, and C cancels the move. This is probably Nax's most reliable use of meter. Next, another arc drive will always... Well, it does that, but anyway, another arc drive pretty much always hits the opponent. In the approach super, circuit breaks both the players instead of reversing their controls. You are circuit broken for slightly less than your opponent, so that's good at least. Now, anyway, time to move on to half moon style. Now, the thing about Half Moon Knack is that he has a must worse back dash and lacks a lot of C Knack's long range tools. Well, for example, he doesn't hawk out a big pool of darkness when using Jumping C. Then he just has this weedy little kick. Literally, all of his normals are minus on block, by the way. The only specials he shares with H Neko are Aerial 236 and 2 and 4, as well as 6 2 3. 2 3 6 is more of a standard projectile, albeit a very thin one. The B version is angled upwards. 2 1 4 is a slightly better tool for mixing. Keyword being slightly. 2 2 is a command grab where the B version. Let me demonstrate runs forward first. It's piddly range, but at least it kind of works. Now, I just realized I forgot to show off of this move, which is shared with the present Neko Art, Chaos, but goes at a different angle. I find the angle of this one for Full Moon to be slightly better, but on to Full Moon Neko Arc Chaos in full, this is considered by many the worst character in the game. Once again, he shares F Neko's Grounded 236, 633, and Aerial 214, but his other tools might be even worse. 214 is a low profile approach, but it takes a bit to actually get going, which is unfortunate. 2-2 creates a set play bird, which would be great if anyone actually respected Knack's set play. The EX version instead has Knack, let me demonstrate, catching a ride on a bird and firing off lasers. It's a silly meme move, but nothing more. Though all in all, Neko Arc Chaos gets a fun of C-, a functionality of F, a rushdown of F, a grappling of F, a zoning of F, and a voice deepness of A. And there you have it, the two most dysfunctionally bad joke characters in the game. I talk a bit about Neko and Mech, but in that character, Neko's just the puppet, and the duo actually functions in some styles, with Crescent Moon style in particular actually being decent in competitive play. So, that's the end of the video. Until next time, take care everyone. See you guys then.